and you're very welcome to this lesson on information technology based on the idea of globalization for a junior cycle business. So what we're going to learn in today's video is we're going to learn uh, how consumers use IT, the difference between shopping online and in stores, what e-commerce is, the benefits and negatives of consumers using technology or e-commerce, and we're going to look at how businesses use IT to influence consumer choice and consumer behavior. So firstly, what a definition of ICT is. ICT, Information Communications Technology, refers to the use of technology to send, receive, gather, store, analyze, and distribute, and communicate information. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff there in that. Take a moment to think about that, okay? So sending and receiving information, so that's simple as saying sending an email, for example. Gathering information, so that's to say researching, looking up stuff. Storing information, so that's say, for example, on your OneDrive or Google Drive accounts or on Dropbox, analyze, so looking up information, data, looking up graphs, distributing information, so say, for example, when I set an assignment or set a task for you guys to do online, uh, and communicating information, so that can be communication in terms of email or looking at a video or anything like that. So what I want you to think about now is how consumers use IT. Pause the video now, have a think, and we're ready, press play to continue. So, consumers use IT in lots of different ways. In some ways, they use it to buy goods and services off different websites, for example, going onto Amazon and buying stuff there, or there's a wide range of different websites. Many shops now have their own website where you can buy goods. To compare the price of products, I'm sure plenty of you have gone online and seen a product in one shop and then Googled the product and looked at it in other shops to see if you can get it at a cheaper price. Look up information about a product or service. So that's where you look up online to see if you can find information about a range of different stuff. And then to look up reviews from other consumers on a product or service. So a great example of that is, say, for example, TripAdvisor or Trivago that compares different... Uh, TripAdvisor is for the uh, holidaying market. So looking up different tourist attractions or hotels or restaurants and seeing what other consumers are saying about that and seeing what reviews they've given about that place. What I want you to do is I want you to consider the difference between shopping online and shopping indoors. Take a moment to think about this, write down your answers, pause the video and play when you're ready to continue. So, there's a wide range of differences between shopping in online and shopping in store. For example, from choice, you have endless choice online. You can go onto lots of different websites and have a wide range of choice. Whereas in store, you only have the choice of what's available in the shop in that store. And what they have in physical stock as well. In terms of price, well, it's very easy to compare the prices with other stores online. But in store, you can only compare the price with a shop nearby that says the same product. In terms of advice online, you can read reviews from other customers and see what they've said about the product. Whereas in store, you're able to get guidance and advice from the shop assistants who may have specific training in that area who might be able to give you some expert advice. No. Delivery then, when you buy something online, you have to wait a few days you should receive the product. You can't get it instantly. Whereas in store, you're able to buy it there and then and then you physically have the good. From a security perspective, online there is the risk of getting scammed, uh, so you have to be very careful what websites you use that you use a good reputable website and that your card details aren't being taken. Whereas in store, you have a low risk; there's a very low risk of you being robbed by the store. When you pay your cash, uh, pay for your good at the till, usually you just end up paying what you paid. It's very rare that you get scammed by a card machine and in a physical shop. For returning the goods then, well, if you're returning goods to an online store, you have to post it back, which can be a lengthy uh, and complex process. Whereas if it's in store, you can just bring it back to the shop and you can immediately get a remedy, either a refund, replacement or repair, depending on the circumstances. For more on that, look back on the chapter on the consumer rights and responsibilities we looked at earlier. In terms of payment, if you're buying online, you need to have a debit or credit card to be able to make the payment. Uh, or you could use a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or something like that if the store, if the online website is willing to accept that. Whereas in store, you can also pay with cash as well as being able to pay with a card. What I want you to do now is I want you to think of the word e-commerce and what does it mean to you? Pause the video now and have a think about that. When you're ready, press play to continue on. So, e-commerce stands for electric commerce, is the buying and selling of goods over the internet. What I want you to do is think about what are the benefits and the negatives or the advantages and disadvantages for consumers using e-commerce. Pause the video now, have a think about it. When you're ready, press play and move on to the next piece. So the pros and cons are the advantages and disadvantages of e-commerce. So the advantages are it's convenient. You can buy what you want when you're at home. 
does choice, huge amount of choice from shops all over the world. Product information, well, there may be more information online than the store assistants would know, so you can be very informed as consumers to what you're buying. Customer reviews, you can also see what the opinions of other customers on our product or service before you actually purchase it, making you an even more conformed consumer again. Some of the disadvantages or negatives of e-commerce though, is that there's usually no human interaction. When you're returning goods, it can be a very long, slow and difficult and possibly expensive process. Also, you run the risk of uh, fraud. A website could take your money or rob your credit card, but never actually uh, pay you, or you never actually receive your goods. What I want you to do is think now, for example, how businesses use IT, information technology, to influence consumer choice and their behavior. So why do they use IT to get you to do things that the business wants you to do? Pause the video now, have a think about that, and press play when you're ready to continue. So, a good example of this would be advertising. Businesses use IT to target ads and specific types of customers on social media. They do this, say, for example, through Google AdWords or Facebook ads, where they, get, where they can place an ad and they can target at a very specific age range to say, for example, so they could, let's say, for example, target male 16 to 18 year olds in the area of South County Dublin, for example. There's no other medium that's able to target ads quite so specifically at such a specific group of people. Also, as well, you can get fantastic analytics and, or information that analyzes how effective your ad is and how, what the engagement was from your selected audience. Also, discounts. Many businesses offer discounts for online purchases to discourage people from shopping in stores to keep the costs down. I'm sure you can all probably think of an example where you've, uh, there's an offer available on online only or from the online store only. Information. Social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, select what you see in your feed based on your preferences. So when you're on Facebook or on Instagram, and if you like a certain page uh, or post, Facebook and Instagram are aware of this and they add this to your own, I suppose, personal profile in their, or from their side of things. So they give you ads very specific on that. So say, for example, let's say you like a, a post about football. Then next thing you might end up getting ads about tickets to a football match or say, for example, football merchandise instead. That way the ad is personalized towards you and what you like. Communication. Many businesses have email mailing lists or use social media sites to contact potential customers to promote their business products or services. That way uh, businesses like to keep in touch with consumers so that they're aware of their latest offerings, maybe they have new products in or of a sale. So by using mailing lists, uh, true IT enables them to directly contact the consumer in a very fast and efficient manner. So folks, that brings us to the end of today's video where we've looked at how consumers IT use IT, the difference between shopping online and in stores, e-commerce, benefits and negatives of consumers using technology or e-commerce, and how businesses use IT to influence consumer choice and behavior. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please, 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 please subscribe to the channel. Because uh, that way you'll be the first to find out all these wonderful, fantastic videos when they go live on YouTube. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And of course, if you have a question, ask below in the comments. Thanks very much for watching, folks. See you again in the next video, hopefully. Take it easy. Bye.